So I was going up to milk the other day, and my little border collie, Lola, ran up the drive and then started barking down into the ravine. And I looked through the scrub oak, and boy, there was a deer down on the other side of the creek. And uh, when he looked up and saw me, I'm going to make a run for it, but he got up, and boy, both those back two legs were clipped at the ankle. He was on stumps. And uh, so I went up and I milked and I came back down and called the king for his blessing to harvest one of his deer. And with the royal ascension, I grabbed my 22 long rifle, walked back over there, and he got up and stood there, looked right at me. And with one shot, he was down, got over there, slit his throat and uh, hung him up and so it's a very interesting time of year to have a buck because the hunting seasons are in the autumn and in the autumn a buck is in rut and so the flavor of that fall buck versus the spring buck is considerably different an interesting lovely gift so got him strung up now these deer around here they uh, are not only eating my alfalfa in the field and in the bale, but they're also snacking around on all these orchards that surround me. We've got apples and peaches and apricots and plums and cherries and grape vineyards and all sorts of uh, delightful things if you're a deer. So they eat really well. And the one thing I really like about game is they're subsisting primarily on a diet of woody perennial plants, deep-rooted grasses, and the wild backlands. In the summertime, they move up into the high country. We don't even see them. So they're up there eating out of these soil ecosystems that are undisturbed by agriculture and therefore have the complexity of soil life to create a complete soil food web, which in a symbiotic relationship with the plants that are growing in that soil are harvesting maximum optimal nutrition for the plant and subsequently for the deer. So their meat organs, bones, contain a perfectly balanced mineralization for this bioregion, and that makes them super precious. And so when a gift like this comes along, it, to me it is a, an ethical and moral responsibility to make the best possible use of that animal's life. And so to use the organs, to save and tan the hide, to extract all the minerals out of the bones with a slow cooked bone broth and then to can that and have it and to butcher out all the cuts, wrap them well, store them, labeled, ready to use. And then in every preparation to think about the life of that deer and its place in all of this and you know, give thanks for the nutrition that is within it, both on a, a physiological level and a spiritual level and, you know, being part of the ecosystem in that way, I find to be very rewarding and proper, you know, the way that feels right to go about things. So in this series, I go through all of the steps and all of the, you know, end applications of of that deer, probably not every single, you know, cut, but enough to give you some ideas, perhaps, of, of good ways to use the meat from one of these animals, however it comes to you. So I'll try to be as comprehensive as possible and really get in there and show you details that are going to help if you're just getting into this or maybe you've been doing it for a while and just seeing the other way that I do it spark some uh, some interesting ideas and conversations. Feel free to jump into the comments section here and, 
and let's talk about it. You know, let's, uh, let's talk about these animals and how you use them, what they mean to you, even if you don't think it's right that I eat this deer. Let me know why, and we can talk about it, you know. To me, nothing is, is more appropriate, ecological, and wholesome than participating in the life cycle of all these other animals out here and eating these deer, eating these elk, you know, the fish in the rivers, and, and uh, knowing that at some point, I'll be returned to this ecosystem and something else will get to go on because I was here and whatever I did, you know. So that's the way I think about it. <laughs>